Three years ago, I came across a blog post to what looked like the most beautiful view I'd ever seen. Being still a very new hiker with only one year of experience under my belt, I wondered, could I do this? Could I get to the top of that mountain? Could I get to that level? You see, this isn't a normal hike. Stretching across the western shore of Vancouver Island, the Mackenzie Range, this jagged mountain range, is a little known secret kept among the rock climbing community. Climbers would ascend the brutal trail, called the Climber's Trail, more than 1400 meters over only six and a half kilometers. Typically an ascent of that magnitude would spread across double the distance or more, making this not a hike, not a climb, but something in between. Two blog posts from local legends, Chris Istis, whose post I originally found, and Matthew Lettington, was all I had to navigate up this mountain, which seemed like a daunting task. Both Chris and Matthew are not only hikers, but climbers, and many of their photos were showing off the rock climbing section at the top. Now I'm no climber and don't intend on being one, so maybe I could find my own Everest up there, my own pinnacle to summit. Well, it was right there in the write-up, Perez Lookout, a flat top summit among the many peaks of the Mackenzie Range. Being one of the only few flat spots up there, climbers would pitch their tents on this summit before climbing the many peaks nearby. It turns out this is the only summit up there accessible without ropes. This soon became my dragon to slay. I grew up a scared kid from Alberta. I was scared of everything. My name's David, not Sunny. I conquered many of these fears in my 20s and mid 30s, but heights was not one of them. As my dad would say, feel the fear and do it anyways, a mantra that I've carried with me in the mountains when I was afraid. After three years, dozens of summits, and hundreds of hours of experience later, I find myself at the base of Perez Lookout. This hike, if we can call it that, starts right off the Pacific Rim Highway on what looks like an old road that reaches 100 meters into the woods. Sometime within the past year, I found a navigation track going up Paris Lookout, the final piece I needed to feel comfortable going up there. <laughs> Would you cut it out? My friend Dave and Darlene sent me a message, hey, you want to go up Paris Lookout? And that was it. It was time. This hike starts like any other, a slightly overgrown trail leading to a well-crafted sign. Some uh, nice person has put a sign to light our way. This is a hike I shared with my friends going back three years when I came across it, but no one had taken a crack at it. Was it the mystery of the unknown? The fact we didn't know a single hiker who had ever been up there, just only climbers. (laughs) Half a kilometer into our journey, we were already off course following what can only be described as the worst bushwhacking I've ever done. Tons of deadfalls, steep forest floor with dry pine needles. After hitting a dead end, I pulled out my phone to find we were 400 meters going up the wrong ridge, well above the creek we needed to cross. After heading down, we found the turn we missed, crossed the creek, and we were back on track on a decently well-booted trail. So we found this other trail that is going down, and the old track I have follows the river, so this makes more sense. Okay, so we're crossing this creek, We've got a cairn up there, we've got more tape down here. This other route is much better. Still a little bushy though. From here, the trail turned from a normal or class two trail into sparse sections of class two with dozens of sections of class three or climbing up with hands and feet. Ascending this kind of train for more than five kilometers wasn't going to be the only problem though. Something was wrong with my body. This is definitely a very well-marked trail very vertical and uh, it's a uh, it's tiring <laughs> lots of climbing I didn't have my normal energy my breathing was heavy and I was sweating profusely early into the hike despite being in the dense forest the air was warm from the 34 degree heat blazing down on the mountain
There's nothing elegant going on here. I don't even know how to describe it. It's the most steep trail I've ever been on. So we're still climbing. Whole thing has been a climb. Now we're up to rock. This trail is just absolutely relentless. It just goes up and that's where our trail goes way up there. It was at this point I would drop so far behind my friends would have to wait for me to catch up. Lugging a backpack full of camera gear weighing 27 pounds or about double their pack's weight was really taking a toll on my body and my energy levels were dropping drastically. When you hike on flatter terrain you don't really feel the weight as much when you actually have to climb upwards your legs just get burnt out so much more quickly. Soon we were greeted with the first view of the day. This rock plateau gives a fantastic view of Kennedy Lake and the surroundings below. About halfway up the mountain I discovered a hole in the ground which drops down about 30 feet, clearly a gateway to the underworld. Blueberry. Mm. I'm absolutely soaked head to toe. Definitely uh, struggling to keep up with my group. I can't. <laughs> they keep waiting for me just because I can't. Uh, I can film at this speed, it's just such a... Whew. There's lots of, uh, you can see here, I don't know if this is a blueberry or a mountain huckleberry, and there's also a bunch of bunchberry up here, which is nice. So I've been kind of munching along the way, get a little bit of sugar, which is nice. a few times here off trail. It's uh, a lot more bushy and hard to follow where to go around here. After taking the wrong trail twice as a game trail crossed the main trail and I just happened to take the two wrong ways before taking the right way, I caught up to my friends who were waiting for me up the trail. At this point we encountered one of the many cruxes on this route climbing this forest wall. Right, folks, I don't even know if I can point my action camera up enough to see the top of this ascent. It's so steep. Come on, ref. So steep that I slip, I have to be holding onto a root to save myself. This was easily the steepest horse scramble I had ever done. There is actually another trail here. 
I don't know if you have to go up this. We were briefly greeted with something that resembled flat ground and some water. This mosquito infested water isn't great to drink unless you have the proper gear to filter it. can't film all the climbing sections, there's just too many, but you can see that's about uh, 20 feet and then there was another one just below it that was another 20 feet. So we're up in the sun now for the first time in about three and a half hours. I didn't realize this trail is mostly in the woods back there and we're probably going to be exposed for the rest of this. There's another rock wall to climb. <laughs> There's many sections like this where you easily lose the trail and suddenly you just feel like you're lost on the side of a mountain. I've lost the trail again. Understand there's a thing right there. Back down we go. It's either something along the side or it's over across, I'm not sure. It's not over there. It's gotta be up there. Yeah, it's up there, so I need to cross up here and cross. There we go. Oh, so we've already ascended 3,500 feet. We're like, 1100 meters and uh, now we're getting blasted with the hot sun. It's supposed to be 33 degrees today so I'm sure it's about 27, 28 right now. I just hope there's water at the top. Right below the summit block is this climb down between two chunks of the mountain. This is a rare case where you have a pretty dramatic cliff within the forest on the left side. So we're on the pine needle slip and slide. You can actually see a dar down there, way down there. There's nothing to hook my feet on. They're making us fight for the summit. So you can see this is where we down climbed. There's actually a really spicy cliff just over there. Beautiful views started to emerge, but my energy was dropping drastically. Every step was becoming heavier and heavier. Found a nice little snack spot here. Cooked potato. Finding this waterfall that still had running water was a real blessing near the top of the mountain. Okay, we're gonna climb up there and get some water.
At this point, I'd already drank six liters of water and it just didn't seem like it was enough. There wasn't enough water I could drink to get my temperature to go down. We're now making our way up the final summit block push. At this point, it's a lot of climbing on your vertical rock all the way up to the summit bowl, where all the peaks are located. The no fall zone, folks. Simple little scramble up here. That's a spicy one right there. So this is the route up here, which this is a climber's trail. Uh, as you can see, that's some pretty seriously exposed rock climbing kind of stuff. We're not safe going up there, or we're not comfortable going down that. So we've opted to bushwhack the side. We're very so close to a pair's lookout now. So it's a matter of crushing through this, pushing up. So that way we know what we can get down. So we push through. All these crazy rock climbers put a cairn there. Yeah, that's a hard no climbing up that. That's a hard no for any sort of normal hiker. And this one's not too bad. I won't lie, this was pretty spicy. You, you go on the right side there, come up, grab this bush. There's a couple foot holds there. You can kind of lunge yourself up. And uh, just a little bit left. The amount of climbing with exposed rock on this hike is far more than any other hike I've ever done. Looking back over three years ago, there's not even a chance I would be able to get up this mountain. Even a year and a half or two years ago, I wouldn't have the skills to get up there. Coming up here, you're gonna do this. Stick on the left side, there's some steps there. Looks like we can basically just use this as a stair step. Some steps on this side, the far right. Careful steps up this rock wall finally gained us access to where all the summits can be found. to the top of this ridge line here and <laughs> there's forest up here I don't really expect that so oh you know yeah there's Mackenzie poking through the trees there we'll get a better view in a second so I'm pretty sure that's Perez lookout right there where we're heading now because we can actually climb up there all the rest he needs ropes
little spicy getting up here on Perez. 4,441 feet of climbing and trumped by about 20 feet of straight up rock. Someone was telling me as long as you're within a summit of, within 30 feet of a summit, it counts. <laughs> Does that count? What's the rule out there? Because <laughs> I'm definitely probably within 30 feet. Looks like 20. The other way is to go over here and uh, maybe up there, I don't know. I'm gonna poke my head up there. So I ended up getting on top of that little thing there and just looping around and now I've got a little bit to go down here. Maybe I can get up over there. I ended up losing my nerve climbing down this rock. I decided to go back the way I came, go all the way around and then scramble up this steep forested wall. The bottom section of the new route I picked out is all rocks and shrubs. It's easy enough to pick my way through. The top half is all thick forested shrubs. This wall was almost vertical at points and I was using the branches almost like ropes to climb my way up. This is the thickest bush at a steep angle I've ever climbed. You folks don't want to fall down that. This type 2 fun wasn't what Dave and Darlene were looking for, so they end up staying at the bottom while I mashed my face through a bunch of bushes. So I'm no rock climber. I ended up going up. There's a bunch of bush there, just the worst stuff ever. As I emerged from the bushes, a feeling of euphoria came over me. Voices from the past started filling my mind. An overwhelming sense of accomplishment filled my soul. These many years of challenging my fear didn't come easy. I wasn't born to climb mountains. There wasn't some inherent gift of being able to scale rock and have no fear of heights. This has been a battle. A battle of conquering obstacles. A battle of conquering fear. Throughout life, fear has crippled me. It's made me afraid of trying new things. It's made me afraid of going new places. I was afraid to drive, I was afraid to fly, I was afraid to meet new people, I was even afraid to go to a party with people I knew. Fear consumed my life, but by my mid-twenties it was time to make a change. I would no longer be afraid to change my life. I would use my fear to push myself to another level. It forces us to ascend to a level we didn't believe we could reach. Fear makes us feel alive. Fear is what makes accomplishments so rewarding, but fear can be crippling. <laughs> fear of not being loved, the fear of not being good looking, not being thin enough, not being strong enough, not being rich enough, and not being smart enough. Fear can drop us to the lowest pits of life or raise us to the highest plateaus. She's a dark mistress that can aid us or consume us. I made a choice 15 years ago that fear would no longer control my life, it would only help serve it. Every time I stand on a summit, I'm reminded of that. I will not be afraid of the unknown, I will not be afraid of hard work, I will not be afraid to go after what I want in life. There's nothing that embodies this more than the Mackenzie Range, the many summits of this mountain, only to be championed by those brave enough to climb its peaks. While rock climbing is not for everyone, we create our own summits in life, our own challenges to overcome. Overcoming fear is what makes life worth living. There's no greater joy than creating pride within ourselves and living with that every day.
15 minutes in the sky, I heard a call from my friends below wanting to head back down. Oh my god, this is... This is lovely, this is lovely. So Dave and Dar decided to just enjoy the view versus go up this bushwhack that I did. That's how I got to the summit, which was not pleasant, but the views are nice. And it's time to head down now. The descent started quickly. We raced down the rock slabs, the steep crux, through the alpine trees to the sketchy forest cliff section. It was at this point I started to slow down again. Holding 26 pounds on my back for seven and a half hours, minus the 10 minute snack break we had, I was beginning to overheat badly in the sun. My friends would disappear into the forest far ahead of me and end up having to wait about five minutes for me to catch up, just like on the ascent. With almost three hours of descent ahead of us, the story takes a turn for the worse as my condition worsens and I run out of water. Dar ends up completely lost in the forest by herself and I end up keeled over in the fetal position on the trail, which will be explained in the next episode on a new series I'm starting called Trail Fails, a series highlighting failures in the woods and how to learn from them. Be sure to subscribe, you aren't going to want to miss this. If you enjoy this content and want to support me, I have a Patreon account at patreon.com slash davidhiking, and I'll see you in the next episode.